Psalm 51 grabs me today. There's actually two verses that I want to talk about. The first is, Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. The next one is a clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Both are talking about a new spirit and sustain it in me. Make sure that it stays with me. A clean heart create for me. Okay, that's the heart of Jesus. That's the heart of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Hey, there's turkeys in my backyard. How cute. Two of them. Sorry for my little distraction, but I'm looking at them going, what are those kind of birds? How fun. I do love nature around here, but I have to say that I put my bird feeder up, and on each side there are two suet cakes. On the ground there is corn, and then there's a little bird bath next to it. Something is coming. By the way, I had to entice them with peanuts, so I put shelled peanuts out there, unsalted. Something is eating the peanuts, but I don't know what. And there's a couple of, like, I don't know, scrapes or paw grabs or something like that in the actual suet cakes. So I don't know if it's a squirrel. I don't know what's coming at night, but I'm not seeing anything hit the the bird feeder. So I don't even have birds there. I think I'm going to get a shepherd's, shepherd's hook and put it on that so that maybe it sticks out a little bit more. Right now it's kind of on the side of the tree. It doesn't face the whole backyard. Anyway, a total deflection, total squirrel moment. Literally, I think it's a squirrel trying to eat all that stuff. But okay, back to the topic at hand, which is creating a new spirit and a clean heart to create for me, oh God. So that means get rid of my vices. Get rid of my sins. Help me to do your will always. Help me to be a loving, kind, generous person who has full self-control. Full self-control. And then give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. I think sometimes we forget the joy of what Jesus did for us, the joy of his sufferings, and that he did it for the love of you and me. He did it all just for you. If you were the only person on earth, he would have done the exact same thing, gone through the exact same pain and suffering with love and always doing God's will, having the spirit of God, he was God, he is God, within him. And sometimes we get bogged down by life. We still have faith. We still believe, but we don't have that joy of his salvation, that joy that one day all of this pain, all of this worrying and anxiety and the struggles that we're having in our life with our health and our relationships and our jobs, all of it will be gone. And we don't just die and have worms eat us when we're in the ground. We have a resurrected body and a resurrected soul. Probably most of us will go to purgatory to be cleansed before we go into the perfect, beautiful place for eternity. We should be jumping for joy. And we should always, 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 always look at our life And don't let our peace be rocked. I am listening to a book. I forget it exactly, so let me look it up real quick here. Where is my Audible file? There it is. Okay. I am listening to a book, Searching for and Maintaining Peace. And it's all about How do we keep our peace? And every single excuse that we have for losing our cool or getting angry or curling up in a ball in fear and anxiety is no excuse at all. We need to learn how to manage our emotions. We need to learn that 
We have to be joyful and we've got to bring God into it. Like I just did the other day when, I, when my floor was flooded after the dishwasher wasn't connected right. I invited God in to help me stop the water, but I didn't invite God in when I was talking on the phone with my plumber. Nothing, even something like that, even death, should we have our peace rocked. This is where it gets down to controlling your thoughts and your emotions. I'm only a couple of chapters into this book, but it almost took the veil off of my eyes last night when I started listening to it. Why? Because I'm letting my peace get rocked, not just because of the water on my floor, but because of the fact that I can't build my one big retreat building. Now I have to go back to the drawing board. Now I hope that They'll approve the new design. I'm thinking about building a a chapel. I'm now freaking about money. The, you know, investment community, I've got lots of stocks and bonds, and that's what I'm tapping into is my retirement fund. So I'm worried, am I going to be okay? And I'm not letting my peace remain with me. This is what Jesus says, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. If we don't, try to do things on our own and we invite God in and we cooperate with grace and we offer up whatever is going on, uniting it to him on the cross, for me, it was such a reminder. So many of us don't have joy in every situation that we're battling right now because we try to do it on our own. And all of the excuses of why our peace is taken from us, don't, they're not legitimate excuses. That's basically what the book is saying. And so how do we get over this? And know that the evil one doesn't want us to be peaceful, doesn't want us to be joyful, doesn't want us to be faithful, and certainly doesn't want us to cast him out when he comes in and attacks us for even sometimes the little things in our life. So what do we do? We've got to stop, pause, and pray. We have to give God, Jesus on the cross specifically, whatever emotion we're feeling that is not of the Holy Spirit. If we're feeling out of control, if we're feeling like life is happening to us, things are chaotic, we don't have any real peace in our soul, and we can tell. Because when we get up, the first thing we do is think about our to-do list and all the things that are happening in our life that we have no control over. Instead of getting up, thanking God, thanking God for the circumstances that you're in, thanking God for helping you to rely on Him. So many of us don't know God's providence. We don't trust in God's providence and that God is going to help us. There was some sort of comparison to a person who jumped out of a plane. They've got the parachute on their back. Immediately, they don't know for sure if that parachute, when they pull the ripcord, is actually going to open and catch them, have the wind go into the parachute and land them safely on the ground. How many of us are worried about the parachute on our back that when we pull the ripcord or when we cry out that God isn't going to be there to help us? And then I look at my husband's death and I'm like, this is sanctifying me. This is helping me to live on my own with God. I keep saying, Lord, I give you my entire ministry through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You guide this. You lead this. I'm not getting freaked out about the fact that nobody's called me back to redesign stuff. I'm just offering it to him. And I'm praying that it won't be too costly. But regardless, I have to allow God to do his thing. To come in, to give me that peace, and to give me that trust that he's going to help me. That everything will be okay. And hey, guess what? It may not be 
the way that, he, that I want it to be, but it will be the way that God wants it to be. This is how I look at my life right now. I look at it like, okay, I don't have my husband. Lord, you chose to bring him to you. So now I need to be joyful of the fact that I know that he is saved, that you answered that to me in my prayer, that you had so many people have masses said for him, that so many prayers were out there for me, for him. I need to rest on that joy. Because if it wasn't the joy of salvation that Jesus went through all of this stuff, Jeff would just be dead. So I have to give it all to God. And this book is great because none of us should have our peace rocked. And then when we do, we turn and we give it to Jesus. We unite it to him on the cross. And then we say something. We offer up some sort of prayer, some sort of petition. So in the name of Jesus, I unite this anger, this fear, this anxiety, this worry, this lack of forgiveness to you, Jesus, on the cross. Go save souls. Or please bring my children back to the faith. Or please help me in my job. Please help me not to lose my peace. Help me to gain control of my emotions. Help me to fight the spiritual battle and know when I have those emotions that are not of the Holy Spirit, that I identify them and I cast them out and I offer them to you. I make them meritorious. This is what ticks off the devil, by the way. The minute that we get one of those sinking feelings or that fear and worry and anxiety or the minute we see that person that harmed us and betrayed us and we get angry, what ticks him off is that we identify it we grab it, right? We choke that thought with our hands, our fists, just a tight fist around that neck of that emotion or that feeling. And then we make it meritorious. Then we offer it to God for something. So all of the attempts of the devil to attack us and to make us stay in this state of unpeace, I don't even know if that's a word, he gets so upset because we take it and we make it useful for God. We pray for others. We pray for things in our own life, and our own family. And on top of that, if we go ahead and cast out the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind the spirit of anger, of worry, of anxiety, of fatigue, of resentment, of unforgiveness. These are all names of spirits. And I command you to go to the foot of the Holy Cross for Jesus to pour his precious blood on you and to receive your sentence never to come back again. So again, you're using the name of Jesus. You have power and authority over your mind, over your body, over your thoughts. And that's another reason to be joyful for the salvation, be joyful for the power of Jesus in our lives. And the more you do this, the more tired Satan and his minions are going to be trying to pull you into that despair or whatever that situation is. I got to tell you, what is that sound? Sorry. <laughs> Weird sounds happen in this house, and I have no idea what they are. I am sprinkling, so I think there was something having to do with that. Okay, so remember that God is always here and that we should be joyful for all he did and that our life here is short and he's allowing these things to happen not because he's a bad God, not because he wants you to hurt and be in pain. He wants you to let go and bring him in. He loves the mess of our lives. And if things are going great for you right now, then please thank him and bring him in also saying, thank you, Lord, things are going wonderful. My prayer life is on track. My emotions are in control. I am loving you and talking to you all day long, and I cannot thank you enough for helping me do life with you. Not for you, with you. 
And it's amazing how quick things can change in our lives, how quickly we can turn to God and have that horrible feeling of whatever you're struggling with disappear. And that has happened to me over this last day, just listening to this book, getting back into prayer, praying for other people, making sure that I get through my list in my rosary, excuse me, because lately I've been saying, Lord, all the people on my list, because it's a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot. You are, on, are in my daily prayers. So I have to say, for all my Reality Reflections listeners, for all the people who watch or listen to me on YouTube, for all of the people out there who are praying for me, it was great to go back through the list because it's a lot and it's just so great to pray for other people. And then, of course, I have my living list and I have my purgatory list. So I go through by name, the people that have gone before me. It's a long list. I don't do that when we take that break. You know what I do? I name the closest family members, and then I go through my aunts, my uncles, grandma, and grandparents on both sides, and all the people that I have on my list. I do that at Mass, too. When it's time to pray right before we go up and receive Jesus in the Eucharist, I say I offer this Eucharist for all the people on my phone and then I always take up a personal petition, and I always ask Mary. I ask God the Father, Jesus, and her beloved spouse, the Holy Spirit, to come into my heart and my soul, my mind and my body, and put Mary there, because I'm not worthy to receive Jesus, but Mary is. And then I ask for her to be there and to receive her son, and then I ask the Holy Spirit to form Jesus and Mary more in me, Let's not forget, Mary was a human being, a perfect, sinless human being who completely gave her life to God and only did his will. How awesome would that be in our lives? Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing your only begotten beloved son down here to earth so that we knew him, so that we saw everything that he did for us and so we can find joy in that salvation with the people that we have lost, with the situations that are so dire in our lives, we can turn to you, we can capture that thought and allow Jesus to be present in our lives. Holy Spirit, we ask for you to guide us and lead us and protect us today, to lead us to all truth, to help us to defend our faith and defend our souls against the evil that is wanting to drag us down. Fill us with joy and self-control. Fill us with the ability to pray always, always and everywhere to give you thanks. It is right and just, and we need reminders. Guardian, angel, please protect us and guide us and give us messages from God in a big way. All you holy angels and saints, angels, please protect us against the evil that wants to bring us down and against all Thoughts that are not of God. And all you saints, St. Padre Pio, St. Therese, St. Teresa of Avila, please come into our lives by praying to Jesus on our behalf with the things that we are struggling with. And now we are going to pray for all the souls in purgatory by name. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary, through your immaculate heart, please pray to Jesus. Pour grace into our hearts. Help us to be peaceful like you are peaceful. To be joyful in all that Jesus did for us. And to look at our lives, no matter where we are, what circumstances we're in. And be peace and love and joy to us and to everyone. Help us to trust in God's providence. Okay, everyone, I love you all so much. I'm going to try to get to Mass a little early, sit with Jesus in adoration, and just be peaceful. Give it all to him. Prayer, prayer, prayer. More time in prayer, more peace in your life, I'm telling you. Find something more with God, soul, mind, and body, and have a blessed and inspired day.